Good day students. Welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 11 through 15 of the CBES Mathematics Review um, test questions. Um, this is part two of our multi-part series. We're going to be focusing on um, measurements, statistics, and estimation in this um, clip. Don't forget to visit our website at mathcodeserve.com for access to a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from algebra all the way to calculus. Let's take a look at question number 11. It reads, at a college, approximately two out of every five seniors go on to attend graduate school. If there are 750 seniors at the college, how many would be expected to attend graduate school. All right, so we have a fractional representation of the whole here, two out of five. Now, if you have two out of five, how can you represent that as a fraction? <laughs> two out of five can be written as two fifths, okay? So two fifths of so the entire um, population of seniors go on to college. So we're told that there are 750 seniors at the college. So we're just gonna figure out what two fifths of 750 is, okay? So of um, in mathematics is the multiplication operation, all right? So we're gonna do two fifths times 750 over one. So there are two ways we can multiply these two fractions. We can multiply across and then divide, or we can cross reduce then multiply. I like to cross reduce because it's a little bit easier. Okay. Since this number 750 ends with a zero, it's divisible by five. Five goes here one, five goes into 750, 150 times. And then now you multiply across, 2 times 150, you get 300. 1 times 1 is 1, 300 over 1 is just 300. So we have 300 seniors that are expected to graduate. Our answer is option letter E. Let's take a look at question 12. It reads, the Mills Library has 1,007,199 books. The Springville Library has 907,082 books. Which of the following is the best estimate of how many bo more books the Mills Library has than the Springville Library? All right, so we're going to be making an estimation on the difference here. So the Mills Library has 1,007,199 books. And the Springville Library, notice how I'm going to write it. I'm going to write it like this, 907,082. Now, what do you notice about the way I oriented the digits of both numbers? You see, I lined it up perfectly, right? All right, so it's easy to carry out computations when you line up your columns. All right, in this problem, we're going to be estimating, okay? So if you look at the options that you have, the hundreds, tens, and ones place are all zero, so we're basically ignoring that piece, okay? So um, we are rounding, not ignoring per se, we are rounding it up to the uh, thousands place in all the options, all right? So if you take a look at this um, situation right here, if we round everything to the thousands place, this problem becomes 1,007,000. Notice I rounded this down because 1 is less than 5, and then here 907, 
Rounding this to the thousands place is simply 7 because 0 is less than 5. Now we can go ahead and subtract these two. When we find the difference, um, we have to borrow one here. We have 100,000. Okay, so this is an estimate of the difference in the number of books. So our answer is option letter A. All right, let's take a look at question number 13. Which of the following is the best estimate for 4,286 multiplied by 390? Now, if you notice, the product here, we all rounded to the thousands place. So what we can do here is we can basically round this number to the hundreds place round this number to the thousands place and then multiply okay so if i round 4286 to the thousands place it becomes or is approximately 4000 how is that two is less than five if i want to round 390 to the hundreds place it becomes 400. How is that? 9 is uh, 5 or greater, so you round up. Okay, so the, this product can be estimated by multiplying 4,000 by 400. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply it out. So we have 0 times 0, 0, 0 times 0, 0, 0 times 0, 0. 0 times 4 is 0. So that's the 1's place. Now the 10's place, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 times 0, 0, 0 times 4 is 0. Now the 100's place, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, and then 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, and then we just add it down. Make sure your columns are perfectly aligned here so you do not introduce zeros that are not there. So we have 1, 6, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? So our final answer is 1,600,000. Now you notice how long this method um, took, and it's risky because you can easily. make errors in aligning your zeros all right so if you don't like this method let me show you another shortcut that you can use so if you're multiplying multiples of 10 so 4000 times 400 these are both multiples of 10 what you can do is you multiply the um, non-zero numbers so 4 times 4 is what 16 and then you just count the number of zeros for the two numbers and put it behind your result here. So we have one, two, three, four, five zeros. And just insert it here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? And then one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma, one million six hundred thousand. So whichever method you like, um, you still get the same answer. All right, let's take a look at question 14. This one is very tricky, so you want to be really careful here. It says the lowest point on Earth is the bottom of the Mariana Trench at a depth of 35,840 feet below sea level. The highest point on Earth is the summit of Mount Everest at a height of 29,028 feet above sea level. Which of the following is the best estimate of the distance between the lowest and highest points on Earth? Okay, so the tricky part here is to note that we're going below sea level and above sea level. All right, so let me give you a visual here. Let's assume that sea level is zero, okay? So if you're going above sea level, 
your measures will be positive. Okay, so if that's the measure to the top of Mount Everest, it's going to be positive 35, actually 29,000. 29,028. And then going down to um, the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Let's make this a little bit longer. It's taken us down to uh, 35,000. 840. Okay, so if this is zero and you're going down, what do you notice? You have a negative value, negative 35,840. Okay? So when you're calculating um, the distance between two points, you subtract, right? You subtract the bigger from the smaller. So the distance here is um, 29,028 minus negative 35,000. Okay, so what do you notice happening here? We have a minus and a minus, so that means we have to multiply the signs. Minus times minus is a plus, so this problem becomes 29,028 plus 35,840, okay? So that's because one is below sea level and the other is above sea level. Now we're asked to carry out an estimation. If you look at your options here, they are all truncated or rounded up to the thousands place, okay? Everything is rounded up to the thousands place. So what does that tell us? We have to write um, round up our measures here to the thousands place before finding the sum. Okay, so let's go ahead and carry out our rounding. So if we round the first number, 29,028 to the um, nearest thousand, we're going to have to round it down because the number before the thousands place the digit at the hundreds place is zero, which is less than five, of course, so we have 29,000. Now, 35,840, the number before the thousands place, the number in the hundreds place is eight, which is five or greater, so we have to round up to 36,000. And of course, we're um, subtracting a negative number, which means we're adding. All right, we'll go ahead and find the sum. We're going to have um, 0, 0, 0. 6 plus uh, 9 is 15. 5 carry 1, 65,000 uh, feet. OK, so that's the difference between the highest point on Earth and the lowest point. OK, so 65,000 feet. All right, let's take a look at question number 15 it says Kim is in the 10th grade and takes a standardized science test use his test scores below to answer the question that follows okay so his raw score is 72 percentile is 88 stunine is 8 and grade equivalent is 12.1. Okay, option letter A. He scored as well as or better than 72. Scoring as well as or better represents the percentile. Okay. Here, 72, is it the percentile? No, 72 is a raw score. So this statement is false. B, 28% or of the test takers scored better than he did. Um, if 28% of test takers scored better than he did, then that places him in the um, 72nd percentile. So all we do is we subtract 100 from 20, 28 
from 100, we get 72, okay, 72 percentile. But is, so statement B implies that he is in the 72nd percentile. Is that the case? The answer is no, he is in the 88th percentile. Okay, so 12% of people scored better than he did. Okay, so that's not the answer. Option C, he would perform adequately in a 12th grade science class. So this option, option C, is referring to this piece right here, grade equivalent. So what does this grade equivalent mean? Grade equi this grade equivalent of 12.1 simply tells us um, how an average 12th grader would score, would score on, on the test, okay? So his score is basically how an average 12th grader will score on the test. It doesn't tell us that he is capable of, of scoring as well as um, a 12th grade student in a science class, okay? So option C is inaccurate because this um, grade equivalent tells us how well an average 12th grader will perform on this 10th grade test, not the reverse, okay? Option D, it says he scored as well as or better than 88% of the test takers. That is exactly right, because this statement is telling us that he is at the 88th percentile. All right, so percentile basically tells you your rank. Um, the Whatever percentile you are at, you are scoring or you're ranked um, higher or at the same level as basically higher than anybody be beneath that percentile rank, okay? So you have 88 percentile, that means that you're scoring um, better or higher than 88% of people that took the test, okay? So the answer to option D is correct. He says he answered 72% of the questions correctly. It has in reference to the raw score. Um, this is false because this is the raw score. In order to find out the percent, the percentage, we have to divide the raw score by the possible number of points that he can get. So some more work is needed to determine his percentage, okay? This is just a raw score and it's not 72%. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for um, access to the remainder of this review series. And do post a comment in the comment section if you have any questions about this presentation or would like to request other math tutorials. More clips can be found on mathcodeserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.